Today's gonna be a really exciting day because we're gonna be attempting to start the Mark IV Supra for the first time. Over the last month, you guys have seen us build the Supra and you know it's backstory. Definitely wasn't my best investment I've ever done, but today, all of those emotions can get washed away because it can be overtaken by the sound of the Jay-Z. Now, obviously, we're still missing some of the turbo setup, but we do not need that for the first start. We're really just gonna make sure that our bass tune is locked and loaded and ready to go. So first things first, before we turn this thing on, we're gonna check for oil pressure. And then once we know that we have good oil pressure, we're gonna key on fueling because that should be the one last missing piece before this thing fires for the first time. I've got all the sensors populated, injectors are set up. I've got the displacement of the engine and what kind of trigger settings. And the last part of the puzzle is getting the fuel pump relays to click over. So I'm using the half bridge output on this, which is kind of cool to be able to give them power and a ground signal so that we can get this thing started today. It's an exciting day when you're putting on hose clamps because you know it ain't gonna be coming back off. Oh no, we'll probably have to take it back off. Hopefully, brother. Whoa. What? <laughs> <laughs> if you're one of those people who doesn't have their hose clamps all oriented up and trimmed, then I don't wanna be your friend. Sorry, Dylan. I'm the one that did- I can't be your friend. Building oil pressure test. Check. Good over here. No leaks, okay. that's a good sign. Yeah. All right, we have oil and fuel pressure, so now we're pretty safe to go for a start. Now Ian's gonna turn the injectors on so we can get fuel into the system. And we're gonna crank again, and if everything goes as planned, the car should start. Yeah, I was gonna say, there's no exhaust housing, there's no, there's no anything, so it's gonna sound odd. Scared the sh out of me. I saw him floor it, and I was like, oh, it's gonna be a little louder. We're getting there. I'm downloading the data log off the ECU of the first start attempt, and I'm gonna go over it and see if I can see anything. It sounds like the ignition's not happening at the right time. That's where I'm gonna look first. I'm gonna just double check that all the sensors are reading correctly, all our temperatures and pressures are right. Then I dig a little deeper. Whoa! <laughs> after going through the car one more time, we found that one of the sensors wasn't completely plugged in. So after getting that sorted, we went back to the beginning to get our very satisfying first start. That's what we wanted, baby. That's what we wanted. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, okay. Sounds great. Hell yeah. Wow. She runs. And it sounded not horrible. It just so opened up like that. That was sick. Okay. Now we know it runs. Let's get to fabrication. So what you're looking at is our downpipe and wastegate dumps, which is currently a bunch of metal. But with the help of this machine right here, our new partner to the channel, Lincoln Electric. We now have an in-house TIG and a MIG machine, which is gonna allow us to do our fabrication in-house, which we've never done before. Now, I don't know how to use this yet, but we have someone that does, and he's gonna be paying us a visit. So we made a house call to one of our friends, JP, who came in and did all of the fabrication for us, which was really awesome. I have to say that it's really cool seeing what we've been able to do with this new space and having someone come in, utilize all the tools and all the materials from our own shop to fabricate this felt really good. This is a pretty straightforward process, but JP is just making sure that all of his cuts are lining up with where we need to go to finish the intercooler piping. So you can see how much JP goes back and forth and he's double checking everything, marking each pipe to make sure that the next cut will line up with where it needs to be. And just like that, the intercooler piping is fabbed up and now it's time to do the final weld so we can throw this thing all together. All right, now that our turbo is in its clock position, we can go ahead and start making all of the oil lines. So we need to make a coolant feed, a coolant drain, an oil feed, and an oil drain. So both of our coolant drains are on left and right of the turbo, and we can actually feed from either side. But we're gonna go ahead and do our feed on our left side and our drain on the right side. So we're gonna make a line that goes from this coolant right here. This is the coolant feed for the radiator. So we already have a provision here, so we're just gonna go ahead and make a line that routes from here sneaks underneath the turbo and comes up and will be our feed. Then we'll make another line for the drain 
which is gonna come off of here. And we're gonna wrap it around the housing and put it in the back because we are doing our coolant drain from the back of the block. There's something really satisfying about doing that. Now that all of our lines and fabrication are done, it is time for us to finally final mount everything and give it the first start. I'm currently packing for my Japan trip and I'm feeling a little bit sad. I'm trying to figure out why. Is it because I'm gonna miss Sabrina? I'm gonna miss my dogs? I'm gonna miss my cars? No, it's none of that. It's because I'm gonna miss sleeping on my Helix Sleep mattress. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you know that I sleep on a Helix Sleep mattress. I've had it for a few years now and it's the best decision I made because I finally have a mattress that is suited for me. Helix Mattress has an online quiz that you can take that best determines what type of mattress is best suited for you. And if you sleep with a partner in bed, there's a dual quiz you can take that finds the best mattress for both of you guys. Now I'm personally a back sleeper and I like a medium firm mattress. So I got paired with the Midnight Lux Elite. One of the best things about this mattress is that once you find the one that is best suited for you, you can order it online and get it shipped to your house. It comes in this big box, you take it out in the desired room, you let it inflate over a few hours and the bed's ready to rip. It's that simple. But you may be saying, Teach, ordering a mattress online I won't be able to just test it out in the store. Well, you don't need to worry because Helix Sleep will let you sleep on the mattress for a hundred nights to determine if you like it or not. And they even have a warranty for 10 years and they have flexible payment options available. And odds are you've probably been sleeping on the same mattress for the last 10 years. Let me tell you, this is your wake up call to change it up and do yourself a favor and try out Helix Sleep. And I was able to secure you guys 20% off of their mattress plus two free pillows by going to helixsleep.com forward slash TJ Hunt or by clicking the links down below in the description. Health is well, folks. And Sleeping is so important to your health, so invest in yourself and check it out. Thank you so much for Helix Sleep for sponsoring today's video, and now let's get back to it. I got some packing to do. So now that it's mocked up, I'm gonna take off our disc flange nuts that we had. We're gonna put on our gasket, and we're gonna switch to our new crimped nuts. Look at that drain line. Also, we double sheathed it. Look, I'm gonna be honest, I have no idea if that helps or not. It might have truly not at all helped, but uh, it's two. There's two of these hot rod sleeves on here. Dylan, we've been waiting for it. <laughs> You're crazy. What's up? Yeah. I've been waiting for this moment. You're sorry. You got it. I got it. Yeah. Now we're going to switch to the final nut. It's the wrong thread pitch. You're effing kidding me. I'm kidding you. <laughs> Come back tomorrow when I finally finish walking all these down. Got that Artec Manfold, that G35900106 AR with that dual wastegate. Gonna be pushing about 33 pounds of boost. It's gonna be getting me all those. That was a good one. You could use that later yeah, for a transition. That was a good one. All right, so unfortunately, this last nut is a little too big. It won't fit on the stud and it keeps hitting the turbo. So Dylan's gonna have a brief little chat with this turbo and we'll see what we can do about it. Look at how tight that is. I could probably take a little more off. So this interior is 90% done. The last 10% is me putting the stereo in because last time I tested it after having, after having everything, I ran out of air. <laughs> <laughs> after testing it, the Speakers didn't work, but everything connected, everything turned on, the backup camera turned on. I had to order a pigtail, I ordered the wrong one, don't tell TJ. I didn't, I didn't, definitely TJ wasn't standing there when I told you guys the first time that I ordered the wrong one. But this is the right one, I've tried it already, I'm gonna rewire this, and hopefully we'll get some audio. As Dylan ruined Perfectly good AN. True, I'm good at f***ing shit. We can never sell that AN now, it's ruined. No one will ever buy that second hand. I'm going to Japan, are you gonna miss me? Yes. I'll get you. I definitely don't wanna get my boy right now. I'll get you a Tokyo banana. Can you get me one? Can you oh, get me a. I can't get you another pillow with a hole in it, Calv. Randy got me one. You gotta get me one. Make sure she's cute. Now that the turbo is mounted, we're going to now just attach all of the feed and drain lines and return lines. And then we'll start putting on the downpipe. And then we'll put on the intake. And then finish the intercooler piping. And 
We should be good. One of the most annoying, but yet fulfilling things to do is to route turbo lines and coolant lines and get everything set up. This is sick. We have the Heat Chill Products Turbo Blanket, which is super cool, and all of the hot rod sleeve. We're so close, we're so close. A few more things to go, and we can hopefully start it and add fuel. <laughs> Last pieces of the puzzle, an Artec carbon fiber intake. This should get all of the good noises that we want out of this car. Also, while you guys are looking at it, I want to point out we will be fixing this. This is for the catch can. We need to get a different um, AN or we might just switch the radium push in because that definitely doesn't look pretty, but we will be fixing it. It's coming, so I just want to point that out. That has come a long way. That is so cool. Artec manifold, Garrett Turbo, Heat shield products, Haltech, everything. Oh, man. Yeah. Dude. So I think we're at the point. The point to turn the car on, and we're gonna check for leaks, continue filling up the cooling system, and we're finally gonna hear the car with an exhaust on it. We're gonna see how it sounds. Really curious to see how it sounds compared to my other. Supra, that Supra has a log manifold. I don't think log manifolds sound very good. This new Artec manifold, I've heard it before. Sounds so sick. Uh, I guess, Ian, when you're ready, you could just key on and we'll see if anything. All right, now that it's running, we're gonna let it go for a little bit. We're gonna monitor temperatures and we're gonna look for any leaks on the ground. I wanna go hear it from the back. in the front seat. Transmission works. Wheels start turning for the first time. Damn, that was good. Look at that smile. Dude, it's about to be driving with all the pieces on for the first time. Are you kidding me? Looks so good. Space in the front. I love it. I'm really in love with it. It looks so good. All right, big moment, big moment, big moment, big moment. Oh. And then we'll put the secondary latch in and everything too. Still need to do all the body gapping. But damn, does that look good. Are you kidding me? I'm that was the burnt pile of crap that came in here. Oh, look how sick that car is. Dude, that makes the black super look like sh**. Oh my god. It really does. It does, dude. It's embarrassing. Go for it. Yeah, just start the key. I love it. Sick, dude. because we are on a time crunch because we are taking a flight out tomorrow morning to go to Japan. The next couple set of videos will all be taking place at Ebisu and I have a few car surprises for you guys when we get there. So be sure to stay tuned for that and you can get more behind the scenes content of that trip on the Clips channel. The Supra is running, no leaks, and is now ready for its final tune. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you boys in the next episode. 
Peace out and keep moving forward.